Believe it or not, it's nearly a year since ChatGPT exploded onto the world stage. At the time, I felt a great disturbance in the force, as if millions of sellers on Fiverr suddenly cried out in terror and were silenced. Since then, Google and Microsoft have worked hard to piss on OpenAI's parade, and even the dick-measuring dimwits Musk and Zuckerberg want to get in on the act. But recently, ChatGPT up the stakes when they rolled out a new feature called the Code Interpreter. No, this isn't the name of a new straight-to-streaming Gerard Butler action flick. It's even more interesting than that. The Code Interpreter has many possible applications, including entire apps and performing detailed data analysis. And as soon as I heard about it, one question popped into my head. Can I use this tool to analyze the metadata in my main Lightroom catalog and get it to tell me all sorts of cool stuff about my photography? And the answer to that question, it turned out, was yes. <laughs> I've always wondered what cool information I could extract from the metadata attached to all of my photos. So this project was a bit of a dream come true for a dyed-in-the-wall nerd like me. Okay, so first things first, you will need to pony up for the plus version of ChatGPT, which is about 20 bucks a month. Some of the other free machine learning chat systems have similar features which may work for you, but when I tried it with newcomer Claude, it rejected my data for being too large. If you have fewer photos than the nearly core of a million I've got, you may get away with it. You will also need a plugin to extract all that juicy metadata from your photo catalog. I used the Export List plugin by Alloy Photo, which worked brilliantly. But there are other tools out there that do a similar job. If you only want to extract a subset of metadata from your catalog, then John R. Ellis's excellent Any Filter is highly recommended. Incidentally, I'll put the links to all this in the description below. However you go about it, the aim of this exercise is to extract all of your photos metadata into a single CSV spreadsheet file. I suggest you don't skimp on the export either. If your metadata export tool lets you select the data you want in the CSV file, choose all of it. Now that you have the data, it's time to upload it to ChatGPT. Firstly, make sure the code interpreter is enabled. Click on the settings button to the right of your profile name, then on beta features, and ensure that code interpreter is enabled. Make a new chat and select GPT-4 from the selection buttons at the top of the screen. From the drop-down list under the GPT-4 button, select code interpreter, and check that there's a tick next to it to show that it's enabled. Click on the plus symbol in the text entry box, browse to your CSV file and upload it. Now that the information is in ChatGPT, we can start asking it questions. I kicked off by telling GPT what I had uploaded and it went ahead and did an initial analysis identifying the various columns in my spreadsheet. I decided to start out with an easy one. Which camera did I take the most five-star shots on? As you can see from the dialogue, GPT first had to fix up some inconsistencies with the CSV file, including stripping out annoying leading spaces. Once it had done all that tidying up, it crunched the numbers and revealed that I'd shot the most five-star shots on my old Canon 7D II. This wasn't a huge surprise to me since I owned a 7D2 about twice as long as I've owned my X-T4. Let's find out what my most successful lens is. I asked GPT to look at my four and five star shots and crunch the numbers. Turned out the 10 to 22 super wide was our candidate. Then I got to wondering if there was a particular exposure 
that tended to result in the most four or five star shots. It turned out to be the most boring combination imaginable. F8 and a thirtieth of a second. Isn't that just the most vanilla aperture and exposure setting combo you've ever heard in your life? Okay, time to get a bit more esoteric. I wondered if the time of day had some impact on the resulting images. So of course I asked GPT. GPT works some magic based on my ludicrously vague time of day wording in the question and opted for a sensible morning, afternoon, evening and nighttime categorization. But I was interested in the specifics, so I asked GPT to reanalyze and list the results by the hour. And apparently I take my best shots in the middle of the night. So then I wondered if there was a particular time of the year that I took the best shots in. So I put it to GPT and after having a bit of a nightmare trying to convert my date time information into useful data, it turned out that July was the month in which I took my best photos. Then I wondered how that would look in terms of a graph. So I asked GPT to generate a bar chart showing the months of the year on the horizontal axis and it kindly obliged. Then I wondered if a line chart would be better, so I had it regenerate the data, and I ended up with this. Thinking about it, I actually preferred the bar chart, but I was quite enjoying these visualizations now. After a few failed attempts to get GPT to make a bubble chart, I decided to ask a new question regarding the number of shots I take at different times of the year. I found the results for this really interesting. It clearly shows that I take a ton more photos in the summer here in Australia. And yet, as you may recall, I scored the most four or five star shots in July, midwinter here in Australia. So the fewer photos I take, the more likely I am to come away with a great photo. Are the elder arcane spirits of photography telling me to slow the fuck down occasionally. I was enjoying this by now, so I figured I'd combine the two charts so I could better see what was going on. This put my mind to rest a little bit. If you look at March, I took a ton of photos, but also a large number of solid keepers. Nevertheless, in October, I seem to take very few photos on average, and yet still score a high rate of keepers. Definitely looks like more haste, less speed should be my mantra. So there you go, guys. That's how you can extract all that useful information from your photo library's metadata and make interesting discoveries about how you work and what gets you the best results. As you can see, you don't need to be technical at all to use the code interpreter in ChatGPT. You just ask it simple questions and it does all the dirty work of tidying up your data and presenting it in a pleasing way. I have got some more ideas for this kind of photographic data analysis. For instance, you can have GPT analyze more than one file. So I can download extra data and have it compare the two. I've got some interesting ideas about downloading a big data set of weather data, which could make for some cool interrogations. Well, that'll do us for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like so the YouTube gods smile on me and send more lovely people in my direction and please consider subscribing to see more of this kind of content in your feed until the next time guys ta-ta